As a child of God, I want to ask all of you today, do you believe that there is meaning? Do you believe that there is purpose in the life that you live? Do you believe there is meaning? Do you believe that there is purpose in the life that you live? Keep that in mind as we dive into our Sunday School lesson here for this week. We're in our Sunday School lesson this week. We're going to take a look at the death and the resurrection of Lazarus, where Jesus said of Lazarus' sickness when he heard of it, he said that his sickness, it is not unto death. Jesus said that his sickness, his death, it is for the glory of God. The glory of God is something that should be revealed through all of us, his goodness, his mercy, his grace, his power, his authority. All of that should be revealed in the life that we live. And so there again should be meaning and purpose in your life to where you live a life being a representative of the Lord for all of those that are around you. You are to be a living testimony today. You have heard me say that before. You are to testify of the Lord, not simply through the words that you share, but through your works, through your actions, and through your deeds. That is at the heart of our Sunday School lesson here for this week. Where our Sunday School lesson, it opens up there in the 38th verse with Jesus making his way to the tomb of Lazarus. If you go all the way back up to the second verse in this chapter, you'll see where Martha and Mary, their brother was sick, their brother being Lazarus. And in the third verse, they sent word to Jesus about their brother being sick. It is essentially a reminder of what we went through in our Sunday school lesson last week, where we saw where Jairus was waiting on Jesus to come back to Galilee. And when Jesus came back, he fell down at the feet of Jesus. And Jairus said, come to my house, my daughter, my 12 year old daughter, she is dying. Jairus was desperate for Jesus to come and to save the life of his daughter. Martha and Mary, they were desperate. They were in desperate need of help. They desired for Jesus to come and to save the life of their brother. But something that we see in this chapter is that Jesus, he did not immediately go to, to Lazarus. Scripture tells us that he delayed for two days. Again, Jesus had said to the disciples that Lazarus, his sickness, it was not unto death, but for the glory of the Lord. And so in this scripture of our lesson today, there in the 39th verse, when Jesus, when he had arrived to the tomb, and when he said to the people to take away the stone from the tomb, as he and Martha, as they stood by while the, the stone was being rolled away from the entrance of the tomb, Martha looked at Jesus and said, Lord, by this time there is a stench for he, Lazarus, he has been dead for days. When it came to the other miracles of Jesus, like I said last week, the religious leaders, they had their conspiracies, you know, they, they said that Jesus, he was doing the works and he was doing those works by, by Beelzebub, by, by a demon. And, and like I said, many of them, they created their own conspiracies. They created their doubt about what it was that Jesus was doing, whether or not Jesus really was healing anyone, even with Jairus' daughter, for anyone that may have known that, that she had died, someone could have created a conspiracy about it. They could have said, oh, she wasn't really dead. Maybe she had gotten knocked out for a few minutes and, and Jesus came in and she just woke back up when he entered into the house, when he entered into the room, when he took her by the hand. There could have been all kinds of conspiracies created about Lazarus being raised from the dead if Jesus was there. Martha and Mary, they desired for Jesus to again come back and to save their brother. But Jesus, as he has said, his sickness, last sickness, his death, it was for the glory of God. And so Jesus, he had delayed intentionally. And I believe what we see there in the 39th verse there, I believe that it is intentionally recorded for us in scripture today that Lazarus had been dead for four days. It erases doubt, any kind of conspiracies that could have been, been could have come up from, from Lazarus being raised from the dead him being dead for four days, 
with him being in a tomb, with there being a, to a, a stone covering the entrance to the tomb, it, re it erases any kind of conspiracies. It erases any kind of doubts about whether or not Lazarus was dead and whether or not Jesus really did raise Lazarus from the dead. Now we'll see there in the 40th verse where Jesus and Martha, as they're still standing there waiting for that stone to be removed from the entrance there, we'll see that Jesus said to Martha, did I not say that if you would believe, you would see the glory of God? And then there in the 41st verse, they were told was able to remove the stone. They rolled the stone away from the place where Lazarus was lying. And then we're told there that Jesus, he lifted up his eyes and he said a prayer here in this 41st verse, where he said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me, that you have been attentive to, to my prayer. Again, Jesus, he was there to carry out the will of the Lord. And what is the will of God? The will of God was that for everyone who saw Christ, for everyone who believed in the only begotten Son of God, for them not to perish, but for them to have everlasting life. Lazarus' sickness, his death, it was unto the it was for the glory of God, for Christ to be revealed to all of those that would see this miracle. And so Jesus was giving thanks to the Father for this, for this happening for this being of his will, right? For him to be able to be revealed to all of those that were around him so that those who saw this miracle, so that they would believe, so that they would have faith, so that they could have everlasting life. And there in the 42nd verse, Jesus in this prayer said, I know that you always hear me, but because of the people who are standing by, I said this, that they may believe that you sent me. And there in the 43rd verse, when Jesus, when he had finished his prayer, we we're told that he cried with a loud voice in the tomb, Lazarus come forth. This, it reminds me again of what we saw in our Sunday school lesson last week. It reminds me of what Jesus said of Jairus and his daughter's death to where Jesus said to Jairus, you know, when Jairus had heard that his daughter had died, Jesus said, she is not dead, she's merely sleeping. Jesus, he had said that to the disciples about Lazarus' death, that he isn't dead, he's merely sleeping. And here he calls forth in the same manner that he called forth Jairus' daughter for her soul to return to the body. Again, she wasn't dead, she was merely sleeping. And so Jesus said to Jairus' daughter, come forth, arise. And here we are with Lazarus, where Jesus, he calls with a loud voice into the tomb, Lazarus, come forth, arise. And look at what happens there. We're told there in the 44 verse that the one who had died came out bound hand and foot with grave clothes. This, this, is, this information is gonna be incredibly important in a couple of weeks when we take a look at the resurrection of, of Jesus. Here, Lazarus, he's bound hand and foot with grave clothes. We're told that his faith, his face was wrapped with cloth. And Jesus, he said to those that were around him, loose him and let him go. And so this is a very powerful moment that we see here in, in scripture to where in the 45th verse, this verse, it is outside of our lesson. But if you take a look at that 45th verse, we're told there that there were many who came from Jerusalem who were there and they were able to witness this miracle. And there may have been many within that crowd that they had not believed in Jesus. They had not yet believed in Jesus. But after witnessing this miracle, after seeing Lazarus come forth out of the grave, after he had clearly been dead for four days, there were many that believed that day. And so again, Lazarus, his sickness, his, even his death there, it, it was for a purpose. It was for a reason. It was for those that had not believed yet. It was for Jesus to raise him from the dead. So that those who had not believed in Christ would now believe. What we see here in our lesson this week, for example, with, with, Jesus calling forth Lazarus from the dead. 
I believe that that's, that's what awaits us. Should we die before the return, for, before the rapture of the church, Jesus, he's gonna call us forth in the same manner and we're gonna rise. The dead will rise first, scripture tells us, and those who are living, they will rise. And I believe we'll be called forth in the same manner. But even before our death, I believe that you and I, we live for a purpose. We live with, with a life of meaning to where you and I, we are meant to glorify the Lord in the life that we live. We, again, we are living testimonies of the Lord and the works that we do should glorify the Lord. Because again, all of those that are around us, the Lord desires for them to be saved. Many of us, we just want our loved ones to be saved, but we should want those we don't know. We should want the stranger to be saved. Even those who despise us, even those who persecute us, again, our commission, it is for them as well. We should desire for all people to be saved. And so you and I, as the children of the Lord, we should be prudent in the life that we live. We should understand that we live a life of meaning, that we live a life of purpose, that we are the stewards of the Lord, that we are representatives of God, and that those who see us, they have the ability to witness God in our life. That's what it means to glorify the Lord. We are revealing God to those that are around us. And so we should live our lives with that in our mind, that somebody somewhere may be looking at us and seeing that and knowing that we are a child of God. And so they may see our actions. And if our actions are poor, they may look at that and go, huh, is that how God is? Is that how God moves? Is that the love of God? And they may choose to turn away from the Lord that day we would have did a disservice of God, we would have did a disservice of ourselves and our faith, and we would have did a disservice for those that watch. So we should understand today that we are testimonies of the Lord and that God, he is working in us. In the same way that, that Christ raised Lazarus from the dead, we are always being transformed in our soul, in our heart today. We're being transformed from that center that we once were. And we are being created brand new. That's what resurrection is all about, being anew. We are supposed to be born again believers, right? And so those who are around us, those who know us very well, they should be able to witness that change that happens within us. And again, God, God will be glorified in that change to where they may have a change of heart as well, to where they may see how good God is to us and they may want God to be good to them as well. And so they may come to us so that they can also be transformed and we can then let them know how we were tr transformed in our hearts as well. So again, I want you to understand and I want you to be encouraged today to live your life knowing that you live as a testimony of the Lord. Thanks for watching this week's Sunday School lesson. As always, I hope that you enjoyed this lesson. I hope that you will take something away from this lesson, that you will apply it to yourself and that you will share it with someone somewhere. And I hope that you'll come back for our Sunday School lesson next week. Make sure that you're following this channel so that you can get the next notification for next week's Sunday School lesson so that you don't miss it, so that you don't miss the Sunday School lesson the sermons, the Bible studies, or the food for thoughts. Make sure that you're following this channel today.